Hey everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Job Search and Career Podcast. I am Bill, the company's expert, and today we're going to talk about my controversial stance on how to give criticism. Now, many people have given advice on how to give criticism, and this is something that uh, we are generally pretty terrible at as human beings, and most managers who manage people tend to be absolutely terrible at this. And uh, it's not something that's really taught. I mean, it's taught, but they teach the absolute basics that are pretty ineffective. (laughs) Um, Things like the sandwich method. Uh, Hopefully you guys are familiar with the sandwich method. Um, That's where you say a good thing and then you say your criticism and then you say uh, another good thing afterwards. And uh, I have seen some comically bad versions of this in reality because the reality is that nobody listens to the good thing you say before and the good thing you say after all they care about is that remark right in the middle that's presented usually with uh, cutting rudeness about how you're bad at something and how you're wrong and how you need to do better, <laughs> you know, and that's the only takeaway in that entire communication. And how do people feel when they're told this? Well, number one, they feel angry. Number two, they don't believe it. And number three, they hate the person who's telling them this. <laughs> and that is the end result. End of discussion. That's the sandwich method, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now, this is most often employed in performance evaluations. If you've had the pleasure of having a job where you have a performance evaluation, usually uh, they do a big one of these once a year, at least traditionally they used to do uh, the once a year annual performance evaluation and you were sat down and you had to sit across the desk from your boss and your boss would tell you, you know, how you're not good at various things and how you have to improve. And most people sit there and they don't believe a word of it. Uh, they're seething with frustration and anger and, uh, you know, the only thing that was accomplished by that entire interaction was to strain the relationship between the employee and their boss. That's the only thing that was accomplished in that, uh, interaction, that performance evaluation. So let me talk about this. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you some points about this and then I'm going to end by giving my perhaps controversial stance on this. Okay. First of all, I want to draw a distinction between direction and criticism. Okay. If you're, if you're a supervisor and you have a trainee and you're showing the trainee how to do a job and you say, don't do it like that, do it like this. You know, that's not really the same thing as criticism. That's direction. Okay. Um, you know, and what I'm about to say doesn't apply to training somebody or directing them to be better at their job. Okay. Criticism is more where you're talking about, uh, a point of improvement to do with uh, the person in general, okay? Not how to accomplish a task necessarily, a specific task, but more a sort of a general point of improvement to a person. At least that's the context that I'm talking about it, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, the first principle here is that it's human nature that none of us like, like being told you're wrong, Okay, when somebody comes up to you and tells you basically you're wrong, we don't like that. Okay, even when we're wrong, we don't like hearing that. And it results in the things I said previously. You get upset, you disregard what the person is saying, and then you end up not liking the person. Okay, Uh, so really the communication has failed. If you're trying to communicate to somebody that they're wrong, they are they are mistaken and. you know, they need to change that communication has failed because that message hasn't been received. I mean, Oh sure. People have listened to your words, but they haven't uh, believed you and they haven't taken that message to heart. Okay. And in that sense, the communication was a failure. Okay. You were unconvincing when you told the person they're wrong. And we see examples of this every day. You know, people, have this perhaps naive kind of uh, uh, notion that, you know, all I'll have to do is explain to this person how wrong they are 
and then they'll immediately agree that uh, I'm right and they're wrong and they will change to be more like me and uh, all will go well for them. You know, this is, this is something that uh, I see every day. <laughs> people, people uh, believe this. And I'm not going to say that it never works, but in, I'd say 99, 99% of cases, it doesn't work. Um, so just telling somebody they're wrong is just ineffective. Okay. Um, you can't convince them that they're wrong now. Um, so let's translate this to now an employment type situation. If you have to correct somebody, uh, what I have found is that, um, first of all, the relationship with the coworker, or if you're doing this to a subordinate, if you manage people and you're doing this to a subordinate, uh, someone who reports to you, your relationship with them is paramount. Okay. If they end up hating your guts or vice versa, you know, things are not going to go well, (laughs) you know, um, sooner or later, it's going to go south. And, uh, usually this takes the form of the person just leaving the organization to get away with you or getting transferred away from your department. So they don't have to interact with you. Uh, that's kind of usually how it goes. So whether people realize this or not, a lot of times they don't, uh, the relationship and the the good working relationship between you and a coworker or you and a subordinate is paramount. So if you're giving feedback, okay. You can consider the interaction a failure if in the process of giving feedback, let's say for the sake of argument that you did, you did communicate to them that, you know, what they were doing was wrong or bad or, you know, or subpar and that they should change what they're doing. Okay. At, as per your instructions. Okay. Um, if you could, let's, let's say for the sake of argument that you've communicated that, but at the same time, It has cost you your good working relationship with that person. Now they, you know, now the person doesn't like you or they don't want to work with you or they actively avoid uh, working with you because they feel they're going to be told that they're wrong again and they're going to get their back up about it. Okay. You can consider that interaction a failure in the long run. It's a failure. Maybe in the short term, you know, it might seem like a success. You've corrected some negative behavior. But if that then goes on to cause that employee to leave the organization because of this interaction, it's a failure. Okay. And the challenge as always is to be able to communicate this without straining the personal relationship. So, I mean, if you want to come down to semantics, uh, something that I do in that situation is I never tell a person they're wrong. I never tell somebody that that what they're doing is bad. Uh, not if I have to work with them, not if we have to maintain a good working relationship instead for what it's worth. I sometimes phrase things like you're doing it this way and that's fine. And, and, and then I compliment it. You know, you have achieved some results, blah, blah, blah. You know, it has prevented this and it has done that. However, I think it would be absolutely amazing if you could find a way to do this thing. That's even better. That's, you know, the format I sometimes use and you can say some things in that format. You can't say everything using that format but that sometimes can be a help. Okay. But it leads me a lot of times to this conclusion that I think is controversial. And that is that you just can't give actual negative feedback. You just can't give criticism to a lot of people in a lot of situations. I mean, you can technically do it, but they won't accept it. And all that will result is they will strain their personal relationship with you And, uh, any attempt to try and convince them that they're wrong and they should do it a different way will be ineffective. So a lot of times if somebody has, you know, has a certain plan and I personally think that the plan is doomed to failure, um, and it's the completely incorrect approach to achieving the goals or or the aim that they have, um, you know, a lot of times I won't criticize. I won't say, well, you're wrong and that's all wrong and that's never going to work because I feel that if I did any of those things, they would never believe me anyway. They would never accept my word. And all it would result is that just they don't like me now. 
<laughs> you know? So, uh, that's kind of my attitude when dealing with a lot of individuals. Uh, usually those tend to be individuals that I'm not super, super close to. Uh, people that I'm closer to, I have a closer working relationship to, I can tend to um, try and give more honest feedback. But uh, for people that aren't really in that circle, you know, that, that I feel would actually respect my opinion more than the average person. Uh, I tend to not give criticism or, or give feedback because I know it's ineffective. It's not going to solve any problems. It's just going to create more of them. So um, that's my personal stance on it. Now, I'm not saying this is the best uh, way to be, <laughs> but I have seen a lot of real world examples of people that don't do this and it just results in nothing but pain <laughs> from all sides. So uh, there you go. That's kind of my my uh, position on giving criticism. And I'm talking mainly about the workplace here. Uh, you know, you, you just have to trust employees and you have to accept that, uh, not, not every employee who is good is going to have exactly the same approach that you do or, uh, have the same principles as you do. And that's okay. They don't have to be a carbon copy of you to uh, have good results. And sometimes you just have to trust them. You have to realize that they're a good person that uh, is good at what they do and trust that they, you know, will be able to succeed without having been uh, taking the exact same approach that you yourself would. So there you go. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Uh, I'm expecting some people to, uh, be able to uh, react uh, either one way or the other on when it comes to this. Um, you know, a lot of people actually, I've noticed that a lot of people, uh, they share this view, but they really don't talk about it. <laughs> and there's sometimes reasons for that, but um, I'm fortunate in the ability, in the, to be in the position where I can, I can at least talk about it without uh, having any major consequences. So let me know what you think. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. You guys are awesome. And I hope to see you on the next episode of the ultimate job search and career podcast. Take care.